Hello, Tungsten Miner here. Today I'm going to talk about immersive engineering. And you can see in here, I've got where you really begin with this mod, uh, this book and this hammer. The book is just a regular book with a lever, and the hammer is just some sticks and iron and some string. But the book has in it all of the different things that you can do with this mod. Uh, so it makes for a really great resource, um, especially as you get into some of this like heavy machinery where you're making uh, complicated machines. This gives you a nice 3D view of how you construct these things in the real world. So keep it around. The hammer is used uh, to configure almost all the items in the mod, so that's an essential item as well. Next up, let's talk through some of the resources that come. Uh, here you can see there's a bunch of different ores that are added. Um, these wind up being all the typical things. So uh, I forget which is which exactly, but you've got copper and tin and silver and lead and nickel between all of these different kinds of blocks. And you'll find them scattered about um, in uh, the typical places. So just as an example here, we can go over and say ores, and here's copper ore, and it will tell you it's between 40 and 72 and needs a stone pickaxe. Here's bauxite, and that's found here, and it gives you this, lead, silver, nickel, so on. So all of these are pretty well described in the book, so you can find out exactly where those things come from. Next up, I've gotten different versions of all of these different things, so you can grind them down into grit, uh, which is what you get when you use the... Um, crusher, I believe, um, in order to crush up the uh, the different ores that you might find. You can smelt them into ingots, you can craft them into nuggets, and you can craft them into full blocks for each of those kinds of metals. Next is uh, this plant called hemp. Uh, whoops, let me change to survival. And when you break these hemp plants, you get a uh, hemp seed to be able to plant more, and you can find your initial hemp seeds just in long grass, like any other Minecraft seed. And then you can use this industrial hemp fiber um, to be able to, uh, that's the recipe, that you can use it to be able to make this tough fabric, um, or this hemp rope coil, or hemp crete. And I'll talk about each of these things a little bit later. But um, this is a, a very handy plant to have around, and you'll wind up wanting to have quite a lot of it. Okay, next up, let's talk about uh, the coke oven. So you make these coke bricks out of just clay and bricks and sandstone. And then uh, you can take coal and toss it in here, and it will turn it into coal coke and produce some creosote oil. So this is just a stack, 3 by 3 by 3 of those coke bricks. And then you right-click the center of it with the uh, engineering hammer, and that's going to turn it into this multi-block structure. Now, once you've got the creosote, you can use it to craft all of these different items. Um, so first off is just a regular treated wood block, and you do this by putting a bucket of creosote in the middle of a crafting table and surrounding it with any kind of wood planks, and that will turn them into treated planks. You can craft those again and get these guys, you can craft them again and get these guys, turning them into slabs and stairs using the usual recipes. You can make a treated stick by putting treated, two treated wood planks on top of each other and then crafting them into stairs the usual way. And then scaffolding, um, let me actually get that right in front of me here, show you the recipe. And that would be, I've got a bunch of mods installed, so you can see I've got a bunch of different kinds. Um, the recipe for scaffolding is fences with the treated wood planks of any kind at the top, and that will get you six scaffolding. Now, scaffolding is a solid block, as you can see, which is see-through, but the really neat thing is that it also functions as a ladder. So if I just walk up to this and start climbing, just like I would if that surface had a ladder on it, I get straight up to the top, and I can go back down again in a nice controlled fashion as well, just like a ladder. So... These things are very handy for making the sides of buildings out of, for making the sides of mines out of, uh, whatever you want to do where you can't put a ladder because there is no block. Uh, you know, if you just want a tower or something that you can just climb up the side of. So any place where you wouldn't ordinarily have a block to put a ladder on, these can serve that purpose. Over here, I've got a wooden post. 
Now these posts are made uh, with a little bit of stone and or stone bricks, wooden post, and uh, yeah, with the treated wood fence on top. So stone bricks, treated wood fence, and you get a bunch of them. Uh, and what these things allow you to do is uh, first they look kind of neat. But second, you can right click them with your engineering hammer and get these different arms. And the arms can be used to hold various items that come up out of uh, the wiring system with immersive engineering. So I'm not going to talk about that right now, but keep these things in mind. It's only the top layer, though, that has that special property. But they are really, really darn useful and look really cool once you got them set up with wires and things. Next up is this little balloon. Uh, these things will float in midair, and you can even place them in midair. So if I grab myself a balloon here, uh, I can just look straight up and then right click, and it will place the balloon. I can look right in front of me and right click, and it'll just place the balloon. So whatever, wherever it is that's uh, directly in front of you is going to be where that balloon is, whatever that next block over is. These things work just like a solid block. So anything you could do with a balloon, you can now do with, um, or any, any, anything you could do with a solid block, you can now do with a balloon, including and especially hanging wire um, connections and things. So these are often very handy for making long stretches of wire. Next up, various power systems. So immersive engineering offers a quite a few different ways of generating RF power, uh, which is the thermal expansion power. So what we're looking at here is a windmill. And uh, windmills are produced uh, with a lot of your treated wood. So windmill. And uh, the recipe for this guy is uh, some iron with the windmill blades. Windmill blades are just treated sticks and treated wood. So uh, pretty cheap to make, really. And then you want a kinetic generator. Um, and that's what's actually making the power. And that gets reused for a whole bunch of different uh, ways of generating power. So um, this is uh, some copper wire, which is just copper ingots around a stick. And then you take a whole bunch of those and put it around some iron. And then you fill in the rest of the pattern to make the generator. And the generator itself, uh, game mode, creative. You can see has a back side, which is just a plain metal face, and it has a front side, which has this circular kind of uh, copper wire pattern. It's on this side that you want to right click with your windmill in order to place it so that um, it generates power correctly. And the power can be drawn off from the back side or the top side here. And you can see I've got this little connector guy. So that is an LV. Uh, wire connector. The recipe for that is just some copper with hardened clay. You get eight of them. And when you right click on something that can generate or receive power, it starts it's serving as an endpoint for copper wire. Now the copper wire is just uh, this stuff right here. And it's just copper with a stick in the middle. And if you want to route power from one place to another, so let's say that wasn't present. Give myself one of these. I right click to place the connector and then I right click the wire on the connector and you can see it says linking from such and such coordinate. Now it's going to remember that and when I go and click on something else which can receive a connection like say this machine over here it's going to form a connection and you notice the wire kind of looks like a real wire and these things will sag and bend and otherwise do exactly what you'd expect. Now there's a couple of limitations. One, there has to be a line of sight between the two endpoints. So this machine has its own endpoint built into it, and that one I added a connector, so that serves as the endpoint. And there's obviously no blocks obstructing the view between these two points. The second thing to note is that they can only go so far, and I'll explore exactly what the limits are in the future, but as you can see, it can get decently far away. Okay, so this machine, is, um, is, is, is uh, current transformer. And uh, its recipe is uh, some more of these copper wire coils, along with a voltmeter, whose recipe is just a compass with some copper and treated sticks. 
and some iron and hardened clay. And what this thing allows you to do is to see how much current is transferring through the system. So here I've got this generator connected to a windmill. The wire comes down and connects to this guy. And if I right click on this current transformer, it's gonna tell me that no energy has moved in the past 20 ticks. Uh, and there's 20 ticks per second, so no, no energy in the past second. But if I connect this guy, so I'm gonna right click, linking from, uh, and let me get hold of an LV capacitor here. So a capacitor is a device which can store energy, and depending upon which kind you've got, it can store more or less energy more or less quickly. Uh, they all require connectors to be uh, functional, and um, this one being an LV capacitor stores very, relatively little amount of energy. Uh, you can see on the top here, there's this blue box. So if I right click with a hammer on the side of this guy, it's going to first go to blue, which means it's accepting power. And then I can click again, it goes to orange, which means it's now outputting power. So orange is output. And I can click one more time and just set it back to neutral. So when I put this thing down to begin with, this side was orange and that side was blue. Now I want the power to come in on the top, but I don't need any power to go out. So I'm just going to turn that off. Now back to my wire, you can see it still says linking from. So this item has remembered that it's currently in the process of linking. I can go fiddle with other items and leave the game and come back again. So it, it remembers where it was going from. And now I'm just going to link it to this connector here so that there's power transferring from the kinetic generator all the way down and through it. If I right click on this guy now, it says three RF per tick. Now, if you know anything about the RF system, you know that's a very tiny amount of power. So that means this windmill is not actually super useful. What we can see next door though, is the upgrade for the windmill. And this is an advanced uh, windmill. Let's take a look at that. Uh, and this guy, the improved windmill, has got a recipe of this improved windmill blade with steel ingot. This is the tough fabric we were talking about before, plus the windmill blade that you already made. Um, and you need more of them, twice as many. So actually, I find this thing is so useless that I don't even bother making it. So little power. I go straight to this guy. It's worth the extra trouble. Um, you notice, though, I've got these standing up. Uh, six meters in the air and of course it's pretty obvious when you look at it why that has to be the case right because the windmill blades have a certain length to them but it, they will actually not allow you to place the windmill blade down if you're too close to the ground or any other obstruction so it's important that you stick your generator way up in the air there I've got my connector coming down again to one of these devices so let me pop down another LV capacitor here and a wire connector and connect this one up so we can see how much power this guy generates. So this one's generating seven RF per tick, which is also not a huge amount of power, but it's a lot better than that guy was. Um, the other thing to note is that weather affects these guys and altitude affects these guys. So I am standing right now at Y level 16, which is uh, about as low as you get, right? I mean, even normal Minecraft worlds are quite a lot higher than this. So both of these are generating a pretty pathetic amount of power. Even getting them up to sea level, they'll start generating a lot more power. And at a maximum, they'll generate something in the neighborhood of like 20 to 25 RF per tick for this guy, and about half that much for this guy. Uh, so you can get a decent amount of power from these things. However, if you want a lot more power, the thing you really want is a water wheel. So water wheels are produced uh, using very much the same sort of materials as uh, what we were talking about before. Let me grab that. So here you've got your water wheel segment, which is treated wood and sticks, and that gets used to make the water wheel itself with some more treated wood in the center. And that gives you one water wheel. Now this setup that I've got here has three of them, which is the maximum that you can put on one axle. And they're so easy to make. They're actually kind of even easier to make than these guys over here because you don't need to fuss about the hemp and the, all that, um, that I often wind up just going straight to this. Now, 
this is kind of a difficult setup to get right, so it's worth talking through exactly what I've done here. First, we can see on the back, I need three meters before I can put down the generator so that I leave enough room for the water wheel itself. I've also encased the whole thing in glass so that the water doesn't spread everywhere and make it difficult to see what's going on. Uh, you may or may not need to do that uh, based upon what your build is. Up here, I've got three water source blocks, one, two, three, right up here at the top. And everything else that you see is flowing water, including the three blocks here, the three blocks here, and all the way down and around. Now, water wheels generate power based upon how many water um, flowing water blocks come in contact with them. So what I've done is built a little framework to try to keep as many flowing water blocks in contact with the wheel as possible. The other thing is that the wheels are sensitive to the direction of the water. So if I had water source blocks on this side, it would actually impede the progress of the wheel. So it's important that I only have water source blocks on one side. Now, the flowing water blocks work no matter whether they're at the top or the side or even the bottom. So I've built this so that uh, the water flowing blocks come around the side all the way down here. And at this point, if I kept going down, I'd lose contact with the wheel and they wouldn't be able to add any more power. So I put in some stone blocks to force a flowing water block over here, which is now in contact with the wheel. That one drops down and comes over here, which is again in contact with the wheel. So I've really maximized and gotten as much power as I possibly can out of this water wheel. Now the nice thing about water wheels compared to windmills, not only can you hook up a bunch of them at a time, but they don't care about altitude and they don't care about the wind or weather or anything else. So if I come over here and I add in um, my LV wire and connector and capacitor, I can connect this guy up to this guy, and now we can see he's generating 57 RF per tick. I remember that was 7, and maybe 25 or so if you have uh, good altitude and good conditions. But this guy, 57 RF per tick. And all you have to do is make treated wood using your coke oven to get enough creosote. So this is really uh, a fantastic way to get a decent amount of power very early on in the game. Okay, I think I'm going to stop here for this time, and next time we'll start off again with uh, looking into the various wiring systems for immersive engineering. So if you like this video, hit the like button. If you want to know when that next video is ready, hit subscribe, and I will talk to you later.